and today we are going to discuss about the most amazing system in the human body, the circulatory system. The circulatory system comprises of the blood vessels, blood flowing through these vessels and heart. First, let's talk about the blood. Blood consists of red blood cells which transport gases all throughout our body. It also contains blood platelets which prevent excessive bleeding by clotting the wounds. And then we have the white blood cells which fight against infections and provide us with immunity. All these three types of blood cells float in this yellow colored liquid called the plasma. Plasma transports nutrients and also carries the waste materials in the body. All this blood is pumped throughout our body 24 by 7 by this muscular organ called heart. Heart is generally covered by an outer layer called pericardium which protects it from shocks. Upon removing the pericardium, we are exposed to the coronary arteries and veins. Both these arteries and veins supply heart with oxygenated and deoxygenated blood respectively. Ultimately, heart is also an organ that, receive, that uh, requires blood supply, right? So, upon removing this coronary arteries and veins, we will be exposed to the internal structure of the heart. So, first, let's study the internal structure of the heart. Generally, heart is divided into four chambers. The upper two chambers are called the auricles and the lower two chambers are called as the ventricles. Auricles are generally thinner and ventricles are generally thicker. They are divided into both left and right auricles and ventricles. Both the ventricles are separated by a septum which is called as interventricular septum which prevents the mixing up of blood from both the ventricles. Now let's talk about the valves present in the heart. The right ventricle is separated, the right auricle is separated from the right ventricle through a valve called as the tricuspid valve. Similarly, the left auricle is separated from the left ventricle through a valve called bicuspid or mitral valve. Both of these valves are, are, are attached to the heart by fibers called as cordae tendinae. Cordae tendinae are attached to the heart through papillary muscles. Now let's talk about the semilunar valves. There are two types of semilunar valves. First one, the aortic valve is present in the aorta which is largest artery of the heart. And then pulmonic valve is present in the pulmonary artery which supplies blood to lungs. Now we will talk about the openings in the heart and the conduction system of the heart. Removing all these valves we can see the openings in the heart and now we will talk about the conduction system of the heart which is responsible for the working of the heart. The conduction system contains main parts called Purkinje fibers which are named after the scientist who invented them. Apart from Purkinje fibers, we also have sinoatrial node which is called as the pacemaker of the heart and there the impulse generation starts. And then it comes down to the atrioventricular node from which the impulse transfers to the Purkinje fibers and it contracts both the ventricles. Understood? So this impulse is generated to the Purkinje fibers and then given to the muscle of the heart, middle muscle of the heart which is myocardium by the blood vessels. Generally there are Three important types of blood vessels in our body. The red color ones are the arteries which carry oxygenated blood from the heart to all over the body, all parts of the body. And then the veins which carry deoxygenated blood towards the heart. And next the third one are the capillaries which are the smallest blood vessels in our body. All these three blood vessels ensure that the circulation happens all through the time. Now let's quickly see the parts of the heart once again so that you will understand the working of the heart. Chambers of the heart, 
right auricle, left auricle, right, uh, right ventricle and left ventricle, valves, tricuspid valve between right and the right auricle and ventricle, bicuspid or mitral valve between left auricle and left ventricle and then we'll have semilunar valves known, namely the aortic valve in the aorta, <coughs> the pulmonic valve in the pulmonary artery. Now let's talk about the working of the heart. First, oxygenated blood enters from the lungs into the left auricle. From the left auricle, upon contraction, by the opening of the mitral valve, blood falls into the left ventricle. Upon contraction of the left ventricle, by the opening of the aortic valve, blood enters and is pushed into the aorta, which is the greatest artery in the heart and the body. Now, this oxygenated blood from the aorta is given to all the upper parts of the body and the lower parts of the body and supplies oxygenated blood to whole body. Now, the oxygen given by the arteries is taken by each and every cell utilized for burning food. Energy is produced and carbon dioxide is given out as waste material. And this waste material carbon dioxide is collected by the veins. This exchange happens in capillaries. Now the veins bring the deoxygenated blood to the heart to two important vena cavae. The superior vena cava brings deoxygenated blood from the upper parts of the body to the heart. The inferior vena cava brings the oxygenated blood from the lower parts of the body and both of them fill the right atrium with deoxygenated blood. This blood by opening of the tricuspid valve enters into the right ventricle. Upon contraction of right ventricle by the opening of pulmonary veins, pulmonary valves, it enters into the pulmonic artery. The pulmonary, pulmonic artery is divided into Y shape and supplies blood to both right and left lungs. Okay. Now, once the blood reaches the lungs, it gets enriched with oxygen where exchange of gases happen. And this and the oxygenated blood returns to the left auricle again and the circulation happens again and again. Thank you.